A water and oil trap fitted inside the chimney. This was an experiment on a Bassett Loke boiler to see if I could replace the usual condenser type oil trap with a simple modification inside the existing chimney. And this is how it turned out. Normally, on a steam plant, you would have a condenser oil trap, which is not really a condenser anyway. It is just there to collect the mixture of condensate and steam oil to stop it going everywhere and making a mess. Before constructing this water and oil trap for inside the chimney, I first needed to see what would happen if I blocked the chimney outlet on the boiler casing. The blistering paint on the boiler is nothing to do with the block of metal on top of the chimney outlet that was there before. I performed a steam test with this block of metal on top of the chimney. Everything seemed to be fine and the boiler raised steam successfully without event. This is what normally collects inside an exhaust condenser. Some of the oil is in an emulsion, some is on top of the water and this does not need to be sprayed out of the top of the chimney. It's now time for a bit of basic turning. In this clip I'm squaring up the end of a piece of metal in the three-jaw chuck of my Boxford lathe. And what kind of metal is this? It's some that I found in a box and it's a very strange colour. It's not brass and it's not phosphor bronze. It is called alum bronze. And it's really horrible stuff. This is terrible stuff to machine for me. I once used some alum bronze for making axle boxes and as a bearing surface it was good. This stuff is exactly the same, it machines in the same way, but it's not too bad because the cutting tool is very sharp, so it's making short work of the machining operation. But the job would become much more difficult if the cutting tool was blunt. So what am I making? I'm making a plug for the base of the chimney. The chimney is not a tight fit on this piece of metal and I don't want it to be. I'm going to use a couple of O-rings to locate it. Let the drilling operation commence, first of all with a centre drill, followed by a drill that's far too big and as you can see it's wobbling about but it's not a big problem because this is not a precision part. You can see how much heat's been generated, the part is smoking. Just one of the joys of machining alum bronze in the home workshop without any coolant. The next part of the job is to use a parting tool to make a groove to take the o-rings. I'm actually going to put two grooves in for two o-rings. After finishing machining the first groove I'm going to use a file to remove the sharp edges just so it doesn't cut the o-ring that I'm going to fit here. In this clip you can see that I've fitted the first o-ring somewhat prematurely. Now I've machined the other groove, I'm removing the sharp edges from that. Once again I'm using the file to remove some more sharp edges on the piece of metal. And here I'm fitting the second o-ring. If this was a piston I wouldn't do it this way, I would clean up the part before I fitted the o-ring, but this is a very simple part that's just going to fit inside the chimney. And as you can see here, the chimney is a good fit. I need to move it into the right position and eventually I'll be drilling a hole in the piece of metal to take the water outlet. At this stage, a lot of viewers will be thinking, well, what am I actually making? I've done it this way just to keep you guessing. So in case you're not sure, I'll tell you now. I'm making the bottom part of a water tank. The main water tank will be the chimney. And that's why I'm using the two O-rings to stop the water leaking out. Although I didn't bother showing the next part of the operation, I drilled a hole from the outside of the plug to the inside of the plug and I'm threading this using a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap. And that's it, the plug for the chimney base is completed. If I loosely put it together, you should get some idea. This is the bottom plug which will have a silver soldered pipe in it. And then once the part is pushed into the chimney, and as you can see it's quite a tight fit, so it should be waterproof. Once I line it up with the hole that I've drilled and threaded, I can screw in a quarter by 40 threads per inch union. Once this is done, I can sit the chimney back in the original hole in the casing, and the union in the side of the chimney will face backwards. To complete the job, first of all, I remove the bottom fitting and put it in the three-jaw chuck to drill a 3 16ths of an inch diameter hole in it. Not all the way through, just a little way down. Then I silver solder a 6 inch length of 3 16 pipe into the fitting and here I'm fitting the fitting to the base of the chimney plug. This time I'm using a copper washer to make sure that it seals properly. This part of the plug will accept the steam pipe from the engine's exhaust. Here's the theory of operation. The exhaust steam travels up the pipe where it comes out of the chimney as steam, but some of it is water and that runs down the inside of the chimney 
and will eventually fill up the chimney, but it won't because it has a drain pipe on it which will be fitted to the fitting sticking out of the chimney at right angles. Simple, very easy to use and very effective, just like a girlfriend I used to know many years ago. I would like to say that this arrangement is only suitable for certain types of boilers, mainly the Babcock type. I suppose I could make a tank that sat inside the chimney that didn't touch the sides, and that way the products of combustion could still escape from the chimney on other types of boilers where the chimney is essential. And once the correct length of pipe was found, I silver soldered a couple of unions, one on each end, and now I'm feeding it in through the hole to stick out of the side. I tried this a few times before I got it in the right position. The heat shield around the burner gets in the way, but eventually everything sort of fell into place. And as you can see from this clip, the drain pipe is facing backwards, so everything's in the right position. After a few minute final adjustments to the angle of the pipe, everything's okay. And this clip shows me fitting a double union center to the pipe, with a spanner at one end and a socket at the other. You can see more clearly what I'm doing when I remove the spanner and the socket. And I want to see if my chimney condenser works. In no time at all, there's a tiny amount of pressure. With a quick flick of the flywheel, the engine starts with no problems at all. Except for the pipe that I've put in the condenser is too long. The water's coming out of the pipe and splashing on the baseboard. When I was making this pipe, I thought, well, I think it's a bit too long, and sure enough it is. So we'll shorten the pipe very shortly. The chimney condenser is successful. Here's the condensate that's come out of the drain pipe. This clip shows the removal of the chimney condenser and the pipe, and as you can see, it's far too long. It's nearly right at the top of the chimney. I'm just going to chop it in half, and that should be okay. I'm marking the pipe with a felt-tip pen because it's easy, and it just shows me where to cut it. I often use felt-tip pens for marking pipes. I just find them convenient. Maybe not as accurate as a scriber, but this is not a precision item. A chimney oil and water trap would also work very well on any of the Stuart 500 series boilers. The benefit of a chimney condenser is that it allows more space on the baseboard. That's it for this successful experiment. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.